Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Cafe. My name is Isaac, and today we are playing some Darkest Dungeon. This is the game that came out in early access a year ago, last January 2015. And a few weeks ago, it actually came out a full release. It took a full year uh, to develop in early access to kind of cook up, and it is now fully done. The game is finished and released. And so I thought I would go ahead and give it a play. I have seen some people play this throughout the course of the last year. I only recently picked it up for myself a few weeks ago, but. I've been having quite a bit of fun with it, and so I figured we would make a video on it, and maybe even a series if it goes down well. So uh, I did create this little YouTube save, uh, because I deleted my single player save to make a YouTube save, but then played a bit more on the YouTube save. So now we're going to create a new save that's going to be called the real YouTube save, and we're going to go. And we don't have an intro cutscene. I'm going to be quiet, let you listen to it. You will arrive along the old road. It winds with a troubling, serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside. Leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient, pitted cobbles of the old road. And on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. Okay, so that was the intro cutscene. We're going to go ahead and click here. Uh, we're now going to play the tutorial. We're on the old road. Uh, normally, we don't play like in a road like this. Usually, we're down in a dungeon fighting some uh, some monsters of some kind. Uh, just a quick warning. This game is a little bit dark. If you're not into things that are dark or uh, if you are scared of things that are dark or anything like that, uh, be sure to click away. You can go watch some other videos. Boom. If you're not, then this is a pretty cool game. So, uh, first of all, we have map navigation down here. We can go... Uh, usually, there's a few different rooms. In the tutorial, uh, of course, there is only the one room that we're going to go to here. But uh, usually, you'll be in one room, and then there'll be a few different ways you can go. And you get to decide which room you want to go. So, we're going to start, of course, by going to this room. And what it'll do is it'll move you into the corridor uh, between the room you're in and the room you're going to. And that's where we are right now. Uh, I apologize. I might talk over this guy a few times whilst we're uh, throughout the video here. And uh, basically, this is the, the core of the game. This is like the most basic battle we're going to have. We bump into people as we move through the corridors and into the rooms, and we have to fight the enemies. So the combat's turn-based, and each of our characters has a, a bunch of different moves that, uh, over time, we can upgrade, customize, replace if we want to, uh, and all kinds of cool stuff. And there's a bunch of things that you kind of need to think about when, when fighting these guys. We'll get into some of them a little later on down the line, because we don't need to worry about everything just yet. Uh, but for now, we need to think about what attack we're going to use. We only have two that we can use, either the two uh, are not usable. Because if you look at the dots here, the little red dots, we can't use it on the person right at the front of the enemy team. And right now, because there's only one person, he is stood right at the front, uh, and so we can't actually attack this guy yet. But we can use these two, uh, and if we click on it and hover over this guy, uh, in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you can see his HP is 12, and if you look a little bit further down, it says hero damage 4 to 8. So when we attack him, uh, we have, let's have a look here, our accuracy is 85, so we have an 85% chance for our attack to hit, and then if it does hit, we'll deal between 4 and 8 damage. Uh, we can also use this one, this one's more of a... Um, You'll see it's got like a little line between it. That means it's uh, like a multi-person shot. It will hit multiple people. And for that reason, the damage is lower on that. Because we only have one guy, we're going to use an open vein. And we're going to go ahead and just slash this guy. Seven's pretty good. Takes out most of his HP. And it also gave him this bleed debuff. If we hover over this again. And basically, what that means, you'll see it says two damage per round for three rounds. So every single round at his turn, he's going to take two damage. And it's going to last for three turns worth. Uh, now we've got a bunch of attacks we can use. I'm going to use the basic one, uh, Smite over here, as a chance to do 6 to 12. So basically, if we hit, which we have a pretty good chance to, it's going to kill him. He is dead. He is done. We're done. He had 50 gold on him. I will take that 50 gold, and we will continue onwards. Now, uh, further on down the line, and also I should probably actually mention this. So that little like effect that just came around our knight's head is what is known as stress. So if you look at the bottom here, we have our HP, and we also have a bar for stress. Now, HP is obvious. If we lose all our HP, we die. Whereas with stress, 
Strength kind of builds up over time when certain things happen. For example, uh, if an enemy gets a critical hit on you, or if an enemy throws uh, certain attacks your way, or if you just happen to come across, like, things that are a little bit stressful whilst you're walking, maybe traps, or maybe just the atmosphere itself, um, this stress starts to go up. And if the stress gets, like, too high, if it fills up, your character will start doing things that you really don't want your character to do, and it has some really negative side effects. I haven't actually gotten to the point where my stress has gotten too high yet, but I also don't want to. I want to keep it as low as possible and hopefully everything will be good. We'll also come across things like this on our way interactive objects that we can go ahead and open and if we want we can look inside now we've got to be careful because sometimes if we look inside these things they can be trapped they can be poisoned and bad things can come out but also we can get pretty cool valuables this one gave us 50 gold pretty cool he tells us to not leave anything unchecked but you'll quickly see that some things we should leave unchecked because if we check them then bad things will happen Send these vermin a message. All right, so this guy's got a lot more HP than before. Uh, I'm going to kick things off with my Grape Shot Blast here, because this does affect both of them. Uh, like I said before, it's a multi-shot. Five and four is pretty good. It's on the upper kind of boundary of the attacks they can do. He's got a similar attack, uh, although we did resist the bleed there, which is pretty good. Wow, 17 is real bad. You'll see he gave us a lot of stress there, and his attack was actually powerful enough to rearrange our characters. This is pretty bad, because this guy sometimes can only attack uh, certain positions. For example, for, like later on in the series when we start to attack teams with four people, if we get pushed back too far, we won't be able to attack anyone. But for now, we can go ahead and we can smite this guy again. Critical 18 is real good. It does also decrease his stress a little bit, which is nice. and also took this guy down quite far. Uh, what is the chance on this? It's five to nine. Ah, uh, we could try and kill this guy in one go. It's unlikely because we'd have to get eight or higher. Um, I think instead I'm going to go for the big guy and try and finish you off next turn with this. Um, my strategy here is usually to either attack the most annoying guy. That was pretty lucky. We both dodged it. Um, attack the most annoying guy, in this case the big guy, or to attack the person with the lowest health and kind of kill them off. Um, right now this guy kind of fills both categories, so I'm just going to try and finish him. Cursed champion falls. He's done. And now we get introduced to corpses. So corpses, the way they work, is they sit on the floor and they still take up a battle position. Uh, if you will, like you remember before, you can see the dots again. We can only attack the person in the first and second position. This corpse is taking up the first position. So if we have an attack, for instance, like this guy, I think, has an attack that can only attack somebody in the first position. If we try and use that and the, there's a corpse in the way, we have to kind of attack the corpse and move it before we can attack this guy behind it. So uh, just something to bear in mind. For now, you'll see actually here, it works out pretty well. This guy can use his, tra his uh, tracking shot to attack the guy at the back, but if he wants to use open vein, we have to attack the cops on the floor, which is what I'm going to do because the tracking shot doesn't do all that much damage, and I would like to be able to do some uh, some more damage next turn with this. You'll see it almost got rid of it. He's going to fire another shot. Two and one's not too bad, although we are kind of low on HP. Uh, and again, this one can only attack here because it can only attack people in the first slot. So we're going to go ahead and attack again. That one got rid of the corpse, which is good. He's finally moved forward. And we should win this. This is the, the tutorial. We should win this one. He dodged it. That's not a good sign. If our characters die, by the way, it is permanent. They die forever. They are gone. They don't respawn. We have to get new characters. So we do have to be careful a little bit. Uh, 6 to 12 with the HP of 8. I feel good. And we killed him. Also reduced his stress, which is pretty good. And we got all of our rewards. Done. Our quest is complete. Um, we can go back and continue adventuring. Uh, there's no real point in this scenario because we've been to every single room. But sometimes you'll go into a dungeon. There will be a certain quest to complete. Uh, you will complete the quest, but you won't quite have done all the rooms. And you might want to go back and kind of search around for some more treasure, stuff like that. For now, we are going to return to the hamlet and uh, see what's there. So this is our victory screen. It shows us all the treasure we've got. Certain things get turned like instantly into gold. And we also got four of these crests, which are, are useful. You'll see in a second why those are useful. Uh, sometimes you get buffs and debuffs appear in this middle section. This time, both of these guys got one. So if we click on um, this guy, he got a new positive quirk. And I'll talk a bit more about quirks in a second when we look at our full roster of characters. But right now, his quirk is plus two speed, which is pretty good. This guy also got a quirk, but it's a negative quirk. He got kleptomaniac, which means he's now prone to stealing items, which is not a great thing. Basically means if we find some treasure whilst we're out and about on our adventures, Welcome sometimes home, he will take it. Such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now, and you are bound to them. 
All right. So uh, this is like a goal thing. You can see we win the real, <laughs> the real YouTube estate. Whatever you call your save uh, is the name of the estate there. And we have this like little activity log here, which is uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, and that'll fill up the more stuff we do. The game works in weeks, so every time we go on an adventure, it takes about a week. We come back, and a week has passed. Uh, we're gonna close this down. I'm gonna close down most of the little two tool tips because I've been through most of them, uh, and I'm gonna kind of talk through them. And now we have all of these little exclamation marks and all of these buildings that we can go to and kind of look at stuff. So first of all, we have the graveyard. Most will end up here. Covered in the poisoned earth, awaiting merciful oblivion. So like I said, when your character dies, it is permanent death your character is done for. So for example, if our knight died while we were out in, out in a dungeon, but the dismast stayed alive, when we came back, the knight would be in this graveyard and we would not be able to use him again. So no matter how much we upgraded him, no matter how many like how much money we put into upgrading his stats, he would be dead. We'd have to start again with another character. Uh, we have this one down here, the Ancestor's Memories. In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. As far as I'm aware, this is just a way to watch the story unfold if you've like missed parts of it or you skipped it by accident uh, we can watch the intro cut scenes again which is uh, something we're not going to do just yet and then finally the most important bit of uh, today's episode at least the stagecoach is where we recruit Women new heroes and men soldiers and outlaws fools and corpses all will find their way to us now that the road is clear so every week after we've finished whatever dungeon we're currently doing, we will come back to the stagecoach. There'll be a bunch of new people over here. By default, there are only two people in at a time. We can, however, upgrade the stagecoach over here uh, to increase the size of the number of people who arrive. So if we increase it to three, which I think we'll do, uh, you'll see it requires three of these and three of these, which is three deeds and three crests. You'll notice we got four crests from doing that dungeon we just did. Uh, and we get more of all of these by doing more dungeons. Then we can unlock more stuff, etc., etc. Uh, so we'll do that. Next time when we come back, there should be three here to choose from instead of just two and we also have the ability to increase our roster size over here and uh, you can see we currently have two of nine in our roster uh we can increase that to 12 yeah we can increase that to 12 if we want uh, but again it's gonna cost us a bit more not gonna do that just yet because there's really no point to right now uh, but we are gonna go ahead and hire both these guys it doesn't cost us anything to take both of them and we do need four people to go into the next battle so we'll take that and I don't think there's much else we can do yet. Right now, it says complete more quests to unlock the rest of these. Basically, a lot of these, for example, like uh, the Abbey, the Tavern, and the Guild. Or maybe not the Guild, but the Abbey and the Tavern, definitely. Uh, are all for relieving stress. So we talked about stress before. Our characters have got a little bit of stress. This guy's got 10. This guy's got 10. And these two, of course, are brand new. They have zero. Uh, if it gets too high, you can come out of a dungeon. You can put some of your people into the Abbey or the Tavern or stuff like that. Uh, leave them there for a week. So you obviously have to take somebody else. But that will lower their stress they'll do activities they'll pray or they'll drink or they'll do whatever and they'll lower their stress then when they come back we can fight again and we don't have to worry about them getting that A max stress of madness and morbidity your work begins all right, so this is the screen where we're going to look at all of our uh, currently available dungeons or quests. Right now, we have this one over here and this one over here. Not quite sure why the darkest dungeon is unlocked. It's a medium. It says medium difficulty level six. Uh, it's in red. None of our guys are level six. I'm not going to bother with that one at all. I'm going to go with the short one that is an apprentice level quest that is for level one people. Uh, it gives us a few things, a few rewards. Not quite as good as this one, as you can see, but uh, it's fine for now. And before we start, we need to choose or build our roster. And basically what this means is this is the order that they're going to stand in. And it matters a bit more than you might think. So if we right click on any of our characters here, we get a nice little stat screen about them. Uh, we can see all of his quirks. We can see he has Warrior of Light, which gives him plus 10% damage if the torch is above 75. We'll get into the torch me mechanic once we get uh, into the game. Uh, he also has quick reflexes, plus two speed. God fearing in the town, he will only pray for stress release, so we can't put him uh, in the tavern or anything like that. He specifically has to go uh, into the abbey. And then, of course, he also has Kleptomaniac, which I think also Dismas has right now as well, which uh, is not great. Uh, you can also see the position that he prefers to be in. Uh, he prefers to be in the one of the front two spots, which makes sense. It kind of links nicely to his attacks here. Most of his attacks only work on the front two people on their side. They're very close ranged. He doesn't have any long range attacks, no bows, no guns, no nothing like that. It's all to do with his swords. He likes to be up front uh, attacking people like that. You can also see his stats and his resistances and stuff like that. Uh, so we're going to put this guy right at the front. You can also rename him if you'd like, uh, which I think I might do just for easiness sake. Some of these guys have weird names. I'm going to call this guy Isaac. This is going to be me uh, for the time being. We then have Dismas over here. This master is the name that I can I can be fine with. Uh, he prefers to be in the second or third slot. Again, we have all of his things over here. Uh, as we go along, we can unlock new, uh, unlock new abilities and we can select the fourth we want to take with us into a specific cave. Um, we can then look at this guy here who is called Plucknet, uh, who I'm going to call uh, Dave. 
because Dave's a nice easy name. Uh, he's the Plague Doctor. Uh, he has certain abilities over here. Some that can buff other players and stuff like that. And for that reason, he kind of prefers to be a bit further back. He also has some ranged attacks. And you can see he's more of like a... He's got a bit of a dagger, but not really like the sword that, that Isaac has. So we're going to put Dave, I think for now, in this third slot. We'll put... Dismas in the second one. Where did he prefer to be? Uh, yeah, Dismas kind of likes two and three. We'll put Isaac up front. And then finally, uh, this one over here is a woman. We'll call her... Uh, Rachel? Sure, why not? We'll call this Rachel. Uh, and she prefers to be in the third slot. I'm going to put her in the fourth slot because usually the way that I play with Rachel is... Uh, she's not called Rachel, but the way I'm going to call her Rachel from now on. Uh, but the way I usually play with Rachel is... Um, I use her heal a lot uh, because other effects are not great at doing damage they do like very weak damage and usually i find my other three in the front take a lot of hits and so having the ability to heal them is pretty good and therefore i'm fine with her kind of being right at the back uh, she has steady which means plus negative 10 percent stress uh damage so i think when she takes damage you could get less stress from that damage i think uh manic for money and in town will never drink so we can't put her uh, in the tavern but that's fine. So this is our roster. This is the lineup we're going to take into our first uh, our first uh, dungeon here. Uh, before we do that, we're going to go to the shop. We're going to get some provisions. The game does recommend that we take at least eight food and four torches into the first dungeon. And I'll kind of explain why we need both food and torches once we get in there. But we'll go ahead and we'll take eight food. Actually, I'm going to take a little bit more than this. suggest. I'm going to take ten uh, and I think like six. Six. Actually, you know, I'll take 12 and 8. That's like a lot more than they suggested, but just to be on the safe side, we will take that. Uh, we'll also take a bandage. We've got quite a bit of money and a shovel. And I'll show you what all these are used for once we get in. Hopefully, we get a, a chance to show you all the uses for all of those things uh, once we jump in. Uh, so now we'll get thrown into the first dungeon here and we'll have to kind of move through just like we did in the tutorial, but at this time in an actual dungeon that we have to fight through. So you can see here there's a lot more choices to go. We still only have one place to go uh, at this point, but like when we get here, we'll get to choose whether we go up or right. And for now, there's not much we can do in here. Now, before we move, actually, I should probably mention the, the quest right now is to explore 90% of rooms. So all we have to do to complete this quest is just explore most of these rooms, and then we're done. And we also have this torch at the top. So you'll see it says Radiant Light, and basically this is torch. As you move along, the torch light will go down. Uh, unless you activate another torch, you can just right-click, and it will go ahead and kind of move that bar back up. If it gets too low, there are some negative debuffs. As you saw in the, uh, the stat screen, certain people work better in more light, certain people work better in low light, stuff like that. Usually I find it's better to keep the torch high we have a better chance of surprising enemies and if we surprise enemies then we do get a bit of a jump on them and we usually get to go first which is pretty cool so we're going to move along here we're going to move along slowly not too happy with the stress we're taking this is a free torch that i will take cool stuff well then keep moving we do have to keep an eye on the floor because sometimes there are traps laid on the floor and you'll see the torch did just go down a little bit there uh we did fight some enemies which is fine all right so as always i'm kind of going to go with smite on this guy right off the bat. 7 to 14. Pretty good chance of just wiping this guy out. Didn't quite get it done, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the Grape Shot Blast to try and finish that guy off and also do a little bit of damage to this one. And then finally, we should, I think, be able to almost wipe this guy out. Uh, what does this one do? Disorienting Blast. Range, accuracy, damage, shuffle, um, stuns. This, gives a, this doesn't do any damage, but it stuns the enemy, which basically means he won't be able to attack next turn. So I will definitely do that. We hit... He resisted the stun, which is not the greatest thing in the world. How much health does he have? He only has three. There's no point in me using the heal yet, so I might as well use Dazzling Light. Uh, not a great chance of it killing him. I didn't think it would, but that's fine. It did also bump the torch light up, I think, a little bit. Oh, he is stunned. He was stunned successfully. Okay, cool. Uh, and then we'll just finish him off with, with one of these. Oh, 13 critical. Nice. Maintain the offensive. Cool. So we'll take all the stuff there. We will take a quick look in this chest. Good stuff, it wasn't trapped. I'm very happy about that. We got a shovel, which so we didn't really need to buy one, but that's fine. Uh, I think it'll show us how to use the shovel in just a second. There are certain debris that we have to kind of clear through if we want to progress. So if we don't have a shovel, it can be a bit of a pain to do so. So again, here we go. It says Even rubble. The cold stone seems bent on preventing passage. We can either ignore it, which is not really an option because we can't leave really just yet. We can use a shovel or we can do it by hand. If we didn't have a shovel, we'd have to do it by hand. It takes considerable effort. I think it increases stress and also decreases health. So we're definitely going to use a shovel for this. Clears it away quite nicely. Again, keeping an eye on the floor, making sure not to find us accidentally stepping on any traps. We did find some guys because of our, maybe because of our light level, but we, we surprised them, which basically means we get to go first. Uh, I will use a Grape Shot Blast and kill, uh, or attack all three of them at once. 
which did quite a nice job there as well. Uh, and now we can use some of these here. We've got Blinding Gas, which I think we used before, which just stuns them. Uh, oh, no, we didn't use that before. It was a different one, but that also just stuns them. doesn't do any damage. Um, I think we're going to use the Plague Grenade. Blight 100% base, which is four points per round for three rounds. So I think I'm going to do that on this guy at the back. He resisted the Blight, which is not particularly great. Uh, I will attack this guy, hopefully kill him off quite easily, reduce some stress, which is nice. We do have the corpse again, so we have to think about that when uh, we attack with our knight again. But for now, uh, no point in using the heal. We will use Dazzling Light on this guy. Almost killed him. We did two, three out, uh, two out of the three there. And now these guys get to fight back. Again, you'll see there, he kind of shuffled us around a bit. We can spend a turn moving ourselves back around, but usually it's not quite worth it, unless you just can't attack at all. Okay, so Dismas can't actually do much. He can only do the pistol shot from this far back. Four to eight. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and kill off this guy here, because the chances of us killing this guy is not very high, and also, like, the less players they have, the less damage they can do, etc., etc. Um, what I think I'm going to do now is give this guy a both? Actually, you know what? No, I've stunned this guy. That also got rid of... Ooh, so does that... Ooh, I didn't really read that effect, but maybe that also gets rid of corpses. That's kind of cool. Um, let's go ahead and... Is there anyone we could heal? Everyone's pretty much at full HP. So there's no real point in healing. Uh, so I guess... We can go for that. It does increase our torch level a bit, which is nice as well. And then we'll finish him off with this blow here. I say finish him off, uh, unless we miss. Which we didn't. We finished him off nice and good there. And he is dead. We will take our deeds and all the rest of our rewards. And progress on through. Todd's getting a little dark. We should probably definitely uh, go ahead and use a few of those to get that kind of back up to, uh, to a nice high light level. Uh, and we'll continue on, I think, to the right here. I think what we'll end up doing is kind of going up here, around and down, and ignoring this room. Because we don't have to complete uh, every single room in the dungeon, I don't think. Alright, we'll, do, we'll risk it. We'll see what's in here. Oh, we don't get to, I don't think, because this guy, uh, yeah, goes to the taking. Because this guy is a kleptomaniac, he is going to take all that stuff for himself, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, we could kind of do with trying to get rid of that negative debuff, but uh, that's something we're going to have to work on in the future. For now, again, we're going to press on through. And, and here we go. We're going to fight these three flipping ding-dongs. They surprised us and somehow swapped our battle positions? That is not good, because the knight cannot do anything right at the bat. Isaac does not work well over there. Dismas can, however, do uh, a nice attack to this guy. You'll see here that Isaac cannot do anything. He's, he dodged it, which is nice. Um, and I think what we'll do is we'll kind of stun. I want to stun the guy with the ranged attack. Because I'm not a huge fan of ranged attacks. I want to keep my, my healer safe at the back here. That was somewhat unavoidable. We can now heal him, though, which is quite nice. Not quite for the four he took, but almost back up to full. Uh, and now you'll see our knight cannot do anything apart from move forward. So I'm just going to shuffle him forward with, uh, with our healer. And every turn, we're kind of just going to have to keep moving him forward. Which is a bit of a waste of time, but we can't do anything else. So that's kind of just how it has to go. Uh, we'll just heal you at the front. Now we'll finish this guy off. Good stuff. There's only two of them left. We do have the corpse. So does this remove corpses? Oh, yes, there's a bomb there. Clears all corpses. So again, I will try and stun this guy as well as removing that corpse. That worked out quite nicely. He is stunned, which is good. He did get a bit of a buff, which is not great, but uh, it's better than, better than nothing. We'll swap him with the... Um, Dave? I think it is. <laughs> Something with Dave. That'll be fine. Could do with healing Dismas, but we'll do that after we take a swing for this guy. He resisted the bleed, but that's fine. Uh, let's again... I feel like... Mm, yeah, I'll go ahead and disorient again, because why not? We can't do it on this guy, so I guess we're going to do it on this guy. He is stunned. We dodged, which is surprisingly good. Uh, now we can start to attack, which is nice. 7 to 14... We have a somewhat decent chance of killing this guy. He dodged it, which is not good at all. Uh, we will heal Dismas at the front here. Back up to four, which is nice. He is stunned, which is good. He is probably going to try and attack in a second, but we're going to go ahead and stun him. Good stuff. Okay. Dismas. Hit him again. He is real low, three HP. The knight should be able to finish him off on his turn. Going for Dave, I'm not quite surprised. Dave's the one that keeps stunning him. All right, Knight. There we go. Okay, cool. KO. Uh, now we can use Dave here to go ahead and get rid of the corpse if needs be. Uh, but we might not even have to do that. I'm fairly certain we might be able to finish him off just by attacking here. Uh, unfortunately, Dave doesn't have any kind of uh, attack we can use just yet. He is stunned. 
which is good. Uh, everyone's fairly well healed apart from Dave, but I think that'll be fine. Was really hoping it'd do two damage and finish him off there, but it did stun him. So we can finally go ahead and let Isaac deal the finishing blow. Low with stress a little bit. Dave's the most stressed right now, whereas Isaac has, like, no stress whatsoever. But uh, we'll take all that stuff. And we'll also take a bit of time here to rearrange our roster. You can rearrange people uh, between kind of rounds here. Everyone is now in their right place. And also we have this uh, Holy Fountain, which we will check. Cool. I will take all of that gold. Nice. All right. Let's go up here. We did get a bit of scouting there, which is nice. We can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, we can see that there is a curio. Not quite sure what that is. We've got a bit of stress. Here is a trap, which we have now disarmed. You got to be careful because if you walk over them, it causes a lot of stress and also does hurt you as well. Uh, let's go ahead and use the torch a few more times. Uh, food, by the way, you can use to heal up your characters between battle whilst you're walking around. You can eat some food and heal yourself up. And there'll also be certain points uh, in the game where you're required to use food. Otherwise, you'll get some negative debuffs. But uh, we'll, 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 get, we'll get to that when, we, when the game tells us to. This guy again is going to take our stuff. Unfortunately, which contains some busts and a portrait. That would have been really nice as well as 10 food. But, uh, but fine, he's going to keep that stuff for himself. That's okay. In fairness, I don't think we pay these guys for anything. So it doesn't matter too much. Here is where the hunger comes in. Uh, it says, the exertions of adventuring have produced a growing hunger amongst the party. Now we have two options. We can either feed them which regenerates 5% of everybody's health, or if we can't feed them or we just don't want to feed them, we can choose not to, but we take 20% extra damage uh, through stress. So when we get stressed, we take extra damage, which is not really worth it. So we are going to eat because we have the food. We're also going to quickly use one of our torches again to fill that light back up. Maybe get the next set of enemies by surprise. Wow, well, there haven't been any enemies in quite some time, but here we go. We're going out to this last one here. There's an obstacle on the way, which might require us to use... Another shovel here, at which point I feel very good about buying another one. Oh, yeah, here we go. Cool, we can use our shovel without to take any damage, which is nice. And then we'll progress on into what I think is going to be the final room. Yep, here we go. All right, there's four of them this time. This guy is a pain in the backside. He has an attack that deals a lot of stress to us, which is not particularly nice. But we're going to kick things off, as always, with a grip shot to the front three guys here. Did a little bit of damage, not as much as I would have liked, but that's fine. Let's go ahead. And, you know, I'm going to give the guy at the front a buff. I'm going to give him some extra speed and some extra damage. And then we are going to go in for a full-on attack on, I guess, the front guy. I want to get rid of this guy, but we can't do it until this guy's gone. Ten is pretty good. He's almost dead. Uh, we will then... How much does he have? Three? This one is going to do one or two, which is not particularly good. So I guess we'll just heal Dave over here back up to full. You'll see right now where the stress comes in. Yeah, 18 stress from that attack. That's real bad. We have to kill that. He's like top priority right now. Getting rid of this guy. So far, this is fine. Let's go ahead and finish this guy off when we can. And then we'll use Dave's attack to clear the corpses. I'm pretty sure he just attacked twice before we got to attack at all. Look at that, 62. 62 is not great. I, I think she needs to heal herself. That's not what I want to do. I thought we were on, I thought we were on Rachel. No. Okay, we dodged. That's good. Um, in hindsight, there's not really much point. I'm going to do this just because I need to do a bit of damage to this guy at the back. Uh, there wasn't really much point in doing um, Dave's attack on anybody. Uh, we will finish you off. And then once it's Dave's turn, which is not right now, but we are going to heal Rachel. Once it's Dave's turn, we'll clear out his corpses and hopefully kill this guy off pretty quickly. Someone is going to take quite a bit of stress damage in a second here. Actually, we might be able to finish him off right now. Oh, we did. Nice. Okay, that's a lot of corpses, but that's fine. We will heal Isaac at the front here. Critical heal, 10 health. Nice. All right, and then we will go ahead and clear all the corpses by stunning this guy. Cool stuff. And then hopefully we can finish him off pretty quickly. We missed. What? He didn't dodge. We missed. All right, we're going for a normal attack. No point for the uh, no point going for the area of effect attack right now. He did resist the bleed. That is fine. Uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and buff up Isaac. And then... Uh, we might as well heal ourselves, I guess, with Rachel there. 
We're going to take a little bit of damage before the end here, but I'm fairly certain this is the last room, so I'm also fairly certain uh, that we're going to win this one. 17. Jeez, that's probably the buff from Dave coming through in the clutch there. Nice. Uh, we are going to continue adventuring real quick just to see what's in this chest. Hopefully something good and not horrible. Uh, the contents are yours. We got another eight crests, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, that's it. We did miss out one room. We missed out this one over here, but that's fine. We are going to head on back to uh, the, um, the hamlet here. So how much gold did we get? We got 4,190 gold, as well as quite a few crests. Quite a few, a lot of crests, actually. A couple of deeds, a bunch more crests. Actually, just a ton of crests. We got, like, nothing but crests, uh, which is fine. We did lose a few busts and stuff to, uh, to our kleptomaniacs, but again, that's okay. Uh, what has happened here? This guy now has another positive quirk. He gets 15% extra damage in wield. Okay. Dismass is Nymphomania, plus 20% stress heals received in Brothel. So if we take him to the Brothel, his stress will go down faster. Pretty cool. And then finally, we have Rachel down here, who got a negative quirk, negative 3% critical ranged skills. So her ranged skills have less chance of being critical hits. Uh, not great, because I think her healing might count as a ranged skill. I'm not quite sure. But uh, we're going to return to the town. And I think with that, I'm going to end this first episode of Darkest Dungeon here. There's a few things we need to do now that we're in the town. We've unlocked the Abbey, and we've unlocked the Tavern. We'll jump into Stress Relief at the start of next episode, kind of put some of our guys away here, get some more people from the stagecoach. You'll see we have a few more over here that we can uh, choose to replace the people that we're going to put into uh, Stress Relief. But for now, guys, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy this video and you want to see more Darkest Dungeon, be sure to hit that like button. Tell me down in the comment section below, and I will see you guys next time.